Welcome everybody, thanks for joining me today. My name is Todd Menard and I am going to be going over the Greater Phoenix Metropolitan Market Housing Statistics for the week ending September 12th and for the month ending August 2022. Looking across the board, we have 43 days closed days on market. We have a 4.36 month supply, a 22.96 absorption rate where average list price is at 681,000, almost 682,000. Our average list price is at 531,000 and our list price to sell price retention is comfortably at 97.33. Active inventory is at 19,948 units, that's up 1.3%. Our pending is sitting at 3627, and our closed units month to date, uh, a little too early, it's at 1679. Taking a look at new listings taken this past week, we took 1,812 new listings this past week. That was down 7%. Again, remembering that we like to see that number above 2,400. When it's below 2,400, usually it means that our inventory is contracting. However, because our pending is so low, there's so few buyers in the marketplace right now, uh, it isn't having as great effect. Uh, 78 days on market for active inventory and 43 days on market for closed. Looking at our price ranges in the bottom right hand corner, under $500,000 is representing 53.76, kind of settling right in there at that 53. Will that 53% be the new norm? Uh, we used to be at 72% under 500,000. The entire 500,000 and under used to represent 72% of the entire MLS inventory. Now it's only representing 54%. And similarly, the 500 to million dollar price range, which used to run about 20%, is now at 35.6% more than likely because a majority of the properties are in that 300 that were in that $350,000 average sale price area average uh, value is now um, at 500 525 550 so as a result it falls into that next category of course a uh, million dollars and up is staying right at where it has always been at about 10 to 10 percent of the entire MLS however it is running at 93 days on market versus more like a hundred in 80 days on market, which is what we used to see. I'm um, taking a look at our spreadsheet. And first, we're starting on the left-hand side. So splitting the entire spreadsheet in half, you'll see uh, the 2019 SW, meaning the same week reporting for 2019. To the left of that, in, in salmon color, you have 2021, same week. Um, and, and the reason why we're going 2019 and not 2020 is because 2019 was a pre-COVID year and 2021 was just last year. So we're trying to see and compare not only this year to last year, but also this year to three years ago, which was a non-pandemic market um, and what was going on at that particular time. So taking a look, we took 1,812. We took 1,945 uh, listings last week. Uh, the last year we were taking 2,100, 2,066 listings in 2034. So when we look at both of those numbers and we're like, yeah, 2050 is about the average, that's about what we should have been. And we're at 1812, so it gets a red ticker because we're below uh, what we should be to properly maintain our inventory. However, inventory 19,948 did creep up 300 units from 19,689. Uh, 19, and if we slide our eyes to the right, you'll see that both in 2021, we only had 8,300 units available. And in 2019, we only had 13,000, 14,000 units available. So having 20,000 units, it has been a long time, like maybe 2014, since we've seen 19,000 or maybe broke the 20,000 uh, unit mark. So it is reasonable though that we should have somewhere in the vicinity based on the number of rooftops in the entire, uh, entire general Phoenix metro market based on population, we should have close to 25, 26,000 listings, which would be uh, a, a, a much more practical uh, amount of inventory. However, when we're only consuming such small amounts, uh, obviously uh, the inventory isn't in as great demand as it was three, uh, four, well, maybe five, six months ago at this point. But taking a look at the uh, 19,948, 614 of those were coming soon properties down from 684. 16,681 were single family non-distressed. That's a good sign. That was up, uh, actually that actually went down just a little bit. Uh, 
that one actually went up a little bit. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the new home one right underneath it. Uh, the new home one did go down just a little bit, contracted about 6%, fewer new home uh, properties in the MLS. Those are getting consumed. Those that are move-in ready uh, properties 30, 60 days out, those are being consumed quite quickly as a new build. Looking at the depressed inventory or the distressed inventory, there's basically hardly any. If we slide our eyes to the left, you can see 0.1 of 1% for short sales, 0.1 of 1% for lender owned, and a 0.00 for HUD. So we're sitting at a 0.2% of the entire, not even 1%, 0.2 of 1% of the entire MLS inventory uh, is, is distressed property. So this, as you can slide your eyes to the right, you can see three years ago, uh, it was significantly more. It was 55 uh, properties that were short sales, 81 lender owned, and five HUD homes. So when we're sitting at these lower numbers, uh, you know, we are not feeling any uh, pushback coming from default rates. Uh, default rates are averaging 7%. That has been the stereotypical norm uh, prior to the COVID was about a 7% delinquency rate. 7% uh, of all loans are likely not to uh, to uh, be paid properly and, and end up in, uh, in foreclosure or uh, repossession. And so in those two situations, um, there's a lot of I buyers that are available today and most homeowners have 30% equity in their home as it's reported uh, on national news. So realistically, they've got some time if they were without payments, maybe lost their job uh, and or uh, they are in a situation where, uh, you know, obviously they can, uh, you know, they, they have I buyers that are out there that will pay 20% uh, less for their homes, but they'll close immediately. So it depends on what the needs of the depressed or distressed property owners are or is. Um, so right now it's not a problem. Looking at pending, we use pending to judge how many buyers are in the marketplace. Now, as you can see, if you slide your eyes to the right, in 2019, there were about 5,200 buyers this week. Last in 2021, there were 5,500 buyers. We're at 3,600. I can comfortably say we're about 2,000 buyers short uh, of any given day. So we should have 1,500 to 2,000 more buyers under contract at this particular moment uh, than we currently do. So that gets a red ticker because we're there's just not enough buyers in the marketplace, which is causing days on market to exceed 70 days on market. Uh, so, you know, it is really imperative that, that people that are interested in putting their house on the market understand we are no longer in a market. We are in a buyer's market. We are no longer in a seller's market where the seller can demand what they want all the terms in their in, of their contract. Now they still can obviously demand the terms, but uh, if they're not reasonable and not comparable to what's recently sold, they're not going to get their money. So uh, very important. 3,600 people. We were at 38, 5,400. But if you slide your eyes way to the right, and you can see in August of 2021 in this blue area right over here, um, you'll see there were 8,900 people in the marketplace uh, during this month in the month of August last year. Neither, we're not reporting those numbers to the left because this is hindsight now, uh, but we finished last year at an average of 8,900 people in escrow, uh, where last month we were only at 5,800. We'll talk about that in just a second. So closed inventory, again, a little too early in the month to, uh, to extrapolate anything that's going on there. But again, there's very, very little activity in the foreclosure market. We're sitting at a four month supply up from three and a half month supply. What does that mean? Well, just slide your eyes to the right. Three years ago, we only had a two month supply which is usually two and a half months is a good number. Uh, 1.14 a month supply uh, last year. And this was of course so late in the, in September was such a uh, late last year, fourth quarter, third quarter of last year, um, the market had already started cooling off. So that's one of the reasons why, you know, you don't see these ridiculously high numbers in comparison right now. Uh, we're sitting at 681 is the average, 681,000, almost 682 is the average sale price. We were at 688 uh, a year ago, uh, 563 uh, two years, three years ago. 531,000 is the average sales price. 
501,000, just $30,000 a year ago. That's about an 8%, uh, 6% uh, appreciation uh, overall. And again, that's basically in line with what NAR and Ted Jones with the Stewart title, uh, University of Arizona, Arizona State University, all the ec economists are saying that this year we should average somewhere about 8% appreciation, not average sale price, but appreciation. And that next year we'll be back to that 4.5%, uh, which was so norm uh, over the uh, many decades prior. So everything's falling into line, everything's slowing down. Prices are not uh, be, are not slowing down per se. They might be uh, 10, 15, 10% uh, lower right now just because it took a, it takes about 30, 60 days, 90 days for that. You know, I can get this for my house philosophy or mentality to go away, and then people start putting a reasonable number more more associated with the comp value. Seller should really, a buyer should really never pay more, and a realtor should never recommend to a buyer that they pay more than comparable value. That's our job, sharing historical uh, evidence. And so we look back and we say, yeah, last month, uh, within less than uh, two weeks ago, uh, properties like this property sold for this amount of money, and that's really uh, a a true potential value for the consumer. So let's see how we finished up for the month of August and we'll be done. So uh, finished up in August with new listings taken at 10,300. That was down 11.1 is where we were the year before. Um, and so consequently, you know, we're down about uh, 8% and we really need to recover that. We were also down 10% in comparison to the month prior. We took 11,500 listings in, in July and only 10,319 in August. August it is actually a vacation month for most executives uh, right before kids go back to school. So it is historically one of our slower months. Uh, but again, uh, just perspective wise, it's slower. Um, looking at uh, active inventory, we were at 19,191, uh, almost 19,200. Uh, we only had 9,800 last year. So having t over twice the inventory. Uh, and again, that was in a month over month decline uh, in inventory. We're at 19.5 in July. Why not in August? Because we really just didn't have, we weren't adding as many new properties and that really caught up to us. 5,380 people were in uh, average uh, in escrow last uh, month. 8,900 a year before. So there you can see the difference. 3,000 fewer people on average in the marketplace uh, than there was a year prior to that. And you can see that is a strong number because we were 32% ahead of last month's number of 44.21. So there were more buyers in the marketplace in the, amount, uh, in the month of August than there actually were in the month of July. And again, July and August both being uh, travel months for people with kids out of school. Taking a look at closed inventory, 6316 is where we ended up. Uh, not a big number there, down, uh, you know, to about 30% over last year. We closed about 9,000 on average this past year. Uh, this past month, we only closed 6,300, so it was down 30%. But it was 2% higher than it was last month. Um, so that actually is a relatively good sign because uh, last year it was only a month, a 1% difference. This year it's a 2% better. So that's a good sign. Uh, taking into uh, account the non-distressed inventory or the distressed inventory, excuse me, uh, again, re representing a very, very, very small percentage uh, of increase from that perspective over a year ago. Three months supply, we finished the end of the month and that's the perfect number, two and a half to three months supply. Uh, because it keeps sellers motivated to list their homes. It keeps buyers motivated to uh, get a good deal and have plentiful supply. So it, it really ends up being a good number. 711,000 we finished last month with as an average list price, 547,000 as an average sale price. So again, some really good numbers, uh, very stable uh, in the marketplace. Finally, looking at days on market, it is creeping up. We're at now a, a 40 day supply versus a 30 day supply, uh, better than even a 20 day supply the, a few uh, last year, early part of the uh, first half of 2021. So 2022 really being in that range is, is, is a good number. Final numbers are 100, but with last year we were at 100%. A uh, hundred uh, percent sale price to list price, which basically meant at the time the seller accepted a offer on their property, the sale price on that offer and the list price was the same. 
Uh, and yet this year we're at 97% of that 97.4%. So what that basically means is the seller is back. If you slide drive way over to the left here, you'll see 97.8 right to the left of the screen ticker. That's that that has been the historical average since 1994 when I've been tracking numbers. Uh, we've been averaging right about 97.8%, about a 2% negotiation off of all list prices on average. So again, we, when we're at uh, above 97.8%, when we're above 100%, the seller's not giving anything away. When we're down below that, that typically means we're falling into more of a buyer's market. We're not seeing that. It's staying right at 97 and a half, right in that area. That's a good sign. And it means again, we're, we're very, very stable. So that's a, uh, that is good. So these are the different places and different ways you can find us. You can find us on your Alexa flash briefings. Simply go to Alexa and tell her, go to the flash briefings and say, uh, you know, turn on what she would say, Realty Market Analysis. You'll hear us at, at your leisure. Uh, we do report only once a week on, on Mondays and we report to Alexa on Tuesdays. So anytime Tuesday on, uh, you can get that. Instagram TV, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, we're everywhere. No, we're not. Uh, and weekly uh, youtube.com forward slash what she would say, Realty. Check the play playlist there because this is where you'll get the slide and the narration uh, where in the others of course you're just getting the uh, narration obviously a pretty long uh, disclaimer point but basically uh, uh, it is what it is so as we move forward uh, this will be at the bottom of all of our slides so thanks very much for joining us I really appreciate it if you have any other questions don't hesitate to get a hold of me you can reach me my contact information is all over Facebook if you'd like anything in for at all please just let me know hope you have a wonderful day Take care.